In this section, we're solving by uh, the quadratic formula. Sorry, there's a typo there. Solving by the quadratic formula. So remember, our quadratic formula is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. When we're solving by the quadratic formula, uh, the first step is very similar to what we do when we're solving by factoring. We need to have this thing set equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract the 3 from each side. All right, because I need this in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So that leaves me with a 2x squared minus 3x and then minus 3. None of these are like terms, so I can't combine any of them. And then 3 minus 3 is 0. And now from here, I can plug it into my quadratic formula. I've got my a, my b, and my c. It's just the numbers out front. So a is a 2, b is a negative 3, and c is a negative 3 as well. So the opposite of my b value is a positive 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is a negative 3, all over 2 times a, which is a 2. And now I just have to simplify this. So I've got 3 plus or minus the square root. That gives me a 9. 4 times 2 times negative 3. Or if you want to think of it as a negative 4 times 2 times negative 3 is going to give me a positive or a plus uh, 24. All over 2 times 2, which is 4. So that's going to be a 3 plus or minus the square root. Uh, when I do 9 plus the 24, that's a 33 all over 4. And then I try to simplify this as far as I can. I look at the square root of 33. There's no perfect squares that divide evenly into the 33. So this is my answer. I can leave it just the way it is. Okay? In number 12, this one's already set up nicely for us. I can see my A, my B, and my C value. A is the 3, B is the 5, C is the 6. So I'm going to go right to plugging this into my quadratic formula. So the opposite of b, b was a positive 5. So the opposite of that is a negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b, which is 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is a 6, all over 2 times a, which once again is a 3. So now I plug away negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25. Uh, and then this looks like 4 times 6 is a 24 uh, times 3 is going to be a 72, so minus 72 all over 6. So that's a negative 5 plus or minus the square root. Uh, 25 minus a 72 is going to give me a negative uh, 47, it looks like, all over 6. And then once again, I want to simplify this thing as far as I can. The square root that I have there, there's no perfect squares that divide evenly into a negative 47, except for 47 times a negative 1. I think of negative 1 as a perfect square because I know how to take the square root of it. The square root of a negative 1 is an i. So I get negative 5 plus or minus i root 47 all over 6. Okay. So again, we want to simplify this as far as possible. There's nothing else that can reduce here, so I'm going to leave my answer like that. And that's it.